zone valves. Hydronic heating systems often use two or more piping circuits to supply heat to different areas in the building. So in order to do that, we actually have to set the system up to be in what we call a zone. Each room of a house can be a zone. And in order to do that, each room would have to have its own thermostat, its own zone valve to control the flow of water to those particular spaces. One device often used to allow or prevent flow in a given zone circuit is the called the two-way zone valve. This is an example of a hydronic boiler with three zone valves, typically using a two-way zone valve. Each one of our zones, one, two, and three, one, here's terminal one, here, here's zone two, here's zone three. Each one of those zone valves would be connected to its own thermostat in its own panel, and as each thermostat calls for, for heat, the zone valve would then open, allowing the, the water to pass through into our baseboard and then back to the boiler. Okay, Each one of those would have its own thing. This is your example of a two-way zone valve. In this case, this is our TACO zone valve. Take heat motor zone valve here. One thing that we always need to pay attention to when it comes to your zone valves is that you have to always put them in the correct direction. On the body of every zone valve is an arrow. That arrow needs to be pointing in the direction of water flow. You can sort of see it in this image here, right here. That arrow is facing in this direction. So in order for this zone valve to work properly, that valve needs to be installed with the arrow facing in the direction of water flow. This zone valve also has a removable head to it. The top portion of this zone valve actually will come off and is actually replaceable. In the event that that portion was to fail, we can simply just pop it off, put a brand new one on, and put the wires back on, and put the zone back into operation without having to drain the boiler of all of its water. Several types of zone valves are also available. They are going to consist of a valve body combined with an electrically powered actuator. So you have your TACO, your Honeywell, and your B&G type zone valves which are pretty much common in all of your residential and like commercial applications. The actuator on your zone valves is the device which causes movement of the valve shaft when supplied with an electrical signal. Usually it's going to be 24 volts. Some actuators use small electric motors and gear trains to produce a rotary type motion on those valves. Okay, these valves, uh, types of valves can move from fully closed to fully open in roughly about three seconds. The good example of this type of zone valve is your Honeywell four-wire zone valve. These guys, once they receive 24 volts from the thermostat, the motor drives open. It's open in about two seconds. And that's what it would actually look like. Okay, again, notice the arrow. The arrow is now, in this case, it's facing this way. So you actually have to make sure that these valves are put in the correct way. This also can be removed. This top portion can also be removed if it was to happen to fail. Others use are going to call use what is called a heat motor that expands and contracts to produce a linear motion that moves the valve shaft up and down. These types are going to take a little bit of time before they open. They take usually around two to three minutes before they go from fully closed to fully open. Your TACO zone valve is an example of a heat motor. If we were to cut that top portion open, this is what you would actually see. You will have, if you notice on the side, we have ter three terminals here, three screws, one, two, 
and 3. If I was to draw this out as a diagram, this is what it would actually look like. Terminal 1, I actually have a motor, which is now my Terminal 2. And in between Terminal 2 and Terminal 3, I have an end switch. So how this motor actually works, once my motor receives 24 volts from the thermostat after it has closed, that motor will now begin to heat up a, like a wax element that's inside there. Once that wax element begins to, to soften and, and, and lose its rigidity, the spring that sits on the bottom now begins to push up. And as that pushes up, the water now begins to be able to flow through. The end switch on this is a proving switch. The only way that a boiler is going to know that a, a zone is calling for heat is that end switch needs to close. So on multiple zone systems, a separate zone valve is installed in the line going to or returning from each zone. Okay. Each zone valve is controlled by its own thermostat. Your end switch and each zone valve control the circulator and or burner or burner control. So the end switch is what has to prove, has to close in order for the burner in the circulator to know that it needs to turn on to deliver heat to a space. Zone valves are available in your two wire, three wire, or four wire configurations depending on the manufacturer. Your two wires are always required to operate the valve's actuator. Then you may have a third or even a fourth wire that's going to be connected to your end switch. Your TACO Zone valves is an example of a three-wire zone valve. Your Honeywell therms, uh, zone valves are as an example of a four-wire zone valve. Two wires are going to be going to my motor. Two wires are going to go to the end switch. All of our end switches are going to be wired in parallel with each other. All end switches are always normally open. The only way they're going to close is if the motor drives it closed. The circulator and burner are also powered when any zone is calling for heat. A circulator pump is always required with your zone valves. You do not have to have a zone a circulator for each individual zone. You can have one circulator on the boiler itself just as long as the circulator is strong enough to overcome the head that it needs to overcome in order to efficiently deliver the heat to the spaces. When the valve reaches their nearly open or fully open position, that end switch is going to be closed. And the closure of that end switch is the proving portion of the entire circuit that proves that we have a call for heat in one of those zones. When we are soldering zone valves into copper pipes, we need to remove the heads of the zone valve so that we don't damage them. Okay, If the disc or ball is there, we have to make sure that these discs and balls are in a position in a way so that the seat does not melt or overheat. All zone valves have a lever on them to manually override that motor and to put the valve in, in the, open the valve in the event of an emergency or if we need to service it and check the operation of it. This is an example of a four zone hydronic system. Here's our zones. There's zone valve one, two, three, and four. Notice my domestic hot water heater has its own zone. Okay. Domestic hot water heaters have to have their own zones if they are going to be wired into a zone system. If I was to have to manually open up this type of valve, I would just slip this lever and slide it over, and that will manually override the motor, and it will open the valve. Both two-way and three-way zone valves are also available. The two-way zone valve either allows full flow through the valve, or it's going to totally stop the flow of water. 
and these are obviously the most commonly typed used zone valves in your residential applications. Another type of valve that we're going to see in your industrial and light commercial applications is the three-way zone valve. That valve has an additional port called a bypass. So when these are installed, the certain piping arrangements, there is no, the flow is not always completely stopped. Okay, there's always going to be flow through it. And here's an example of a three-way zone valve. Flow is going to go either that way or that way. Okay, either way, it's never completely shut. It just simply bypasses or just diverts the water to a different area of the system. The three-way zone valve is useful when flow must be maintained in a certain portion of the piping system and is often necessary in modern low-mass boilers with consistent, constant firing rates are used. The three-way zone valve can also be used as a diverter valve. And when used in this application, the valve directs the incoming water flow into one or two possible outlets. In some systems, the three-way zone valve functioning as a diverter valve are used in direct hot water from the boiler either to a space heating distribution system or an indirect water heater. But it's never going to be the same. It's never going to be both. Okay, so once maybe one thermostat satisfies, the valve is now going to change position. It's going to divert the rest of the remaining water, hot water that is there, maybe possibly into a hot water heater or some sort, or maybe another portion of the heating system. Most zone valves for residential and light commercial applications are always going to be operated off 24 volts. This is an example of your TACO zone valve wiring. Yes, yes, we have exactly three zones. You have a transformer. Transformer is stepping down 24 volts to feed my thermostats which are wired in parallel. Once each thermostat calls for heat, it is now going to close. It will send the 24 volts down into my terminal 1, which is now my motor, my terminal 2, which is basically nothing more than my common, is now going to go back to my transformer and also down to one of my T's on my Aquastat. My terminal 3 is my other end of my end switch and that just simply goes down to the other T. So once my end switch closes between T and T or between 2 and 3, I am now completing the circuit for my my TT which will now energize my my coil for my relay inside my Aquastat, which will then in turn turn on my circulator and my burners. This here is my Honeywell zone valve wiring diagram. In this case, this is a four wire type uh, zone valve. We've got one, two, three, four. So in this case, my thermostat, my tr sorry, my transformer is now going to send power up to my thermostat my thermostat is going to close, which will now energize my motor. And once my motor opens, my end switch will now make, which will now send my signal down to my aquastat and my boiler.